From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. This is my third call. Where have you been? Out buying some tackle. Want to go fishing? Fishing? Yeah, I'm heading down to New York State. Esopus River, maybe the beaver kill. Try to snag myself some nice trout. And, Patsy, my fishing is one thing you aren't going to interfere with. Wouldn't think of it. But why don't you try Lake Mojave? Ah, uh, where's that? Along the Colorado River, out between Nevada and Arizona. What? Sure, be the guest of greater Southwest insurance and liability. What are you talking about? I don't know how you'd value those Esopus River trout, but there's a fish out there that may be worth three million bucks. Johnny? I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Expense account item one, cab fare from my apartment to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, 8242 North Spring. When I got there, Pat McCracken was standing holding the door of his office open for me. My in, Johnny, but don't bother sitting down. Now, what's that supposed to mean? It means you haven't got time, you all pack. Oh, you bet I am. For a trip to the Esopus and some of those pretty rainbows in Eastern Brook Trout. Got a new lure oil called Fast Strike I want to try out. I hear it's great. Sorry, but if there's going to be any actual fishing, it's going to be for Lake Mojave Bass. Says you. Here, here are your plane tickets. Here to New York, nonstop to Los Angeles, and out to Las Vegas. From there, you'll have to go to Kingman, Arizona by car. Slow down, boys. Slow down. The man is Ian Kingman is Jake Kessler at Southwest Whoa, Insurance. Oh, Pat. Yeah? You mind telling me what it's all about? The Midas touch mine. New racket in uranium? I said Midas. Gold mine. Oh, sure. Well, uh, what's the insurance angle? Ask Jake Kessler when you get to Kingman. Well, but you can at least tell Look, me what... Look, you've only got 20 minutes to catch your plane to New York. You mean if I decide that... And I'm... with a million and a half dollars, maybe three million at stake, nobody's going to quibble too much over your expense account. Uh, maybe I should take a crack at those Lake Mojave bass. <laughs> expense account items two and three, 290 even, a handful of American Express traveler's checks and cab fare back to my apartment for my luggage. Then to the airport from my plane to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. It was 11.30 p.m. when the big plane slowly glided down out of the clear starlit sky. And unless you've seen the millions, billions of stars that twinkle brightly through the clear, dry air over the Mojave Desert, you've missed a real thrill. We glided down toward the landing strip on the edge of the town of Las Vegas. From the air, the myriad multicolored lights made the fabulous resort sparkle like a field of jewels. Item 4, 30 cents phone calls to car rental agencies. They were all closed. Item 5, 65 cents per cab to the Flamingo Hotel, where I decided to spend the night and drive on to Kingman in the morning. Item 6, hotel overnight, food and, uh, incidentals, $178.30. If you know Las Vegas, you know what that word, incidentals, means. Fifteen odd and black. Place your bets, please. No, no, the line, dice are right, All right, there we go. I'll say this much. I tried to make some expense money on the side, but, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't have tried to cover so many of the gambling joints if I'd stayed at the Flamingo, where I'd always made me a buck or two at the casino. But this time, Lady Luck just wasn't on my side. Anyway, well... Item seven fifty dollars Deposit on a rental car the next morning. I headed south and east toward Kingman, Arizona. First stop, Hoover Dam, where that tremendous hunk of steel and masonry straddles the Nevada-Arizona state line. And I took a brief but longing look at what I could see of Giant Lake Mead. I wanted to stay right there, break out my fishing tackle, and take a crack at some of the huge lunker bass for which Lake Mead is famous. But duty is duty, or something. Anyhow, I hit the highway again across the hot, dry desert toward the city of Kingman. At this time of year, at this time of morning, the thermometer hits the 100 mark without any trouble at all. And the occasional swimming pools and motels outside Kingman look pretty inviting. But I drove straight to Jake Kessler's insurance office on East Palm Drive. 
Oh, hi. You must be Dollar. It's a good name. Come on in. Jake was tall, angular, well tanned, and dressed in blue jeans, open denim shirt, high heeled boots, and broad brimmed hat. He looked as though he'd be more at home on a range pony than in this insurance office. All right, Dollar, let me tell you what this is all about. Okay, thanks, Mr. Kessler. Jake, you want the folks around town to think I'm putting on airs? Oh, okay, Jake. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Johnny, I hope you didn't make any arrangements to stay right here in Kingman, did you? No, my bags are still out in the car. Uh, good. I got a place waiting for you down at Catherine Landing. What's that? Lake Mojave Resort's what they call it now. It's nice cabins, good restaurant, nice people right down at the edge of the lake. Too bad you aren't a fisherman. Well, uh, <clears throat> I uh, just happened to have brought along a couple of rods and reels. Good boy, then you'll love it. Bust your favor down there. I'll show you spots where you can haul in the prettiest mess of largemouth bass you ever saw. Five, six pounds, maybe more. Oh, stop making my mouth water, Jake. I'm supposed to be here working on a case. Well, every man's entitled to a little time off for fishing. And you look like you could stand some. Brother, you are killing me. Listen, Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau said something about a gold mine. Uh, yeah, I contacted Pat because I knew he'd know where to find you. It's the Midas Touch Mine, Johnny. And it's right down in that neighborhood where you'll be staying. Well? The mine was abandoned back in the early 30s. Worked out, apparently. But about a year ago, hard luck Dennis took another look at it. Who's he? Dennis? Yeah. Prospector, promoter. Here and there, Arizona, Nevada, California, he's found himself an old mine, pecked away at it, and managed to scratch out a fair living for himself. You said promoter. Yeah, well, that was in Texas, mostly. Never was able to get the full story, but it appears he got some folks to invest in some kind of phony oil stock down there a couple of years ago and had to skip out. Couldn't have been too serious, though, because the law never bothered chasing him up here. Or else he was able to make things look legal enough. Could be, could be. Anyhow, he's been back in this country for a while now, poking around the hills, looking for the big strike again. You know how prospectors are. Yeah, I've heard. Finally, a while back, he started prowling around the old Midas Touch. First thing you know, he'd got a lease on it. Well, I still don't see the insurance connection. You will. You will. And you won't like it. Okay, go on. Well, next thing we knew, he'd got a report on some ore samples he'd brought into town here at the assay office. Johnny? Well, you wouldn't believe it. Good, huh? Johnny, it looked like a prospector's dream come true, or worth about $1,100 a ton. All right, now, it takes money to work a mine like that, no matter how you figure it. First of all, he had a big pumping job to do. Pumping? Out there in the middle of the desert? That's right. You see, when there was just the Colorado River running down the valley, it was different. But since Davis Dam was put in to form Lake Mojave about ten years ago, the level of the water table in that whole area is raised considerably. Oh, I see. The Midas Touch was in a low spot, and parts of it were dug pretty deep. So now, with seepage from the lake feeding it, the lower level filled up with water. Yeah. Well, now, Jake... Simmer down, Johnny. I'm getting to it. Hard luck, Dennis needed money. A lot of money. So, who should he come to but the Haskell brothers? Three of my best clients. So what happened? I hate to keep chewing your ear off this way, but I've got to give you some background. Shoot. Ernie, Kevin, and George Haskell, they're money men from back east. What do you mean, money men? Oh, brokers. You know, stock market. Oh. Yeah, they made themselves a big pile of dough, got the usual ulcers doing it, and then decided to give up and get as far away from New York as possible. I don't blame them, but about but this... But when they got out here, instead of just retiring and taking it easy... You know, much as you might like it at first, you can get pretty bored just riding around on horseback and hunting and fishing all the time. Get tired of fishing? Huh? Uh, nothing. Go on. Yeah, well, after a few months, they decided they'd have to have something to do with themselves, or at least something to occupy their minds, so they bought up the old Too Lazy Two ranch. Cattle? 80,000 acres north of Easton here. Not very good grazing land, but enough to keep two, three hundred head of beef alive and... With Alex Bundy as their foreman, they did all right. Well, uh, now let's get down to... Gentlemen uh, ranchers, they called themselves, and that's just about what it amounted to. They built a nice house on the property, settled in it, and, well, not much work, but just enough worry and responsibility so that time didn't hang too heavy on their hands. Now. Now? Now. All their insurance is with my company. The straight life, that is. 500000 apiece. And you're afraid something's going to... Yes, gonna... sir, half a million each and double indemnity. Wow. A million apiece in case of death by accident. Right. Accident. So, let's get back to hard luck Dennis. Well, that part's easy, isn't it? Is it? Sure. Dennis needs money to open his mine. The Haskell boys are obviously loaded. Right. First off, even before he got his lease, he tried to sweet-talk him into putting up some money, but after years of fooling around with those bulls and bears in Wall Street, they were too smart for that. 
So we took them down in the mine, let them chip off some samples of ore, and had them take it themselves down at the assay office. And was that the ore that you said tested so high? Yes, sir. And from the minute they saw the report on it, you couldn't have held them back with a 20-mule team. How much did they go in for? 20000 apiece, cash, on the strength of a handwritten agreement with Hard Luck Dennis that they'd get 30% of whatever came out of the mine. Okay, Jake, now let's get down to business. Are you afraid that something connected with this Midas touch mine and Hard Luck Dennis has put the Haskell brothers in jeopardy? I'm afraid it's got beyond that, Johnny. Huh? Three days ago, Hard Luck took the Haskells over to the mine again for another look. Yeah? Cave in. They finished digging their bodies out yesterday morning. All three of them. Hard Luck Dennis? He wasn't caught in that cave in. Where is he? Who knows? Hmm... Then for you, it's a question of a $3 million payoff on the policies or a million and a half. Yep, Johnny. A question of accident or murder. Then for me, it's a matter of finding a killer. Yeah, named Hard Luck Dennis. And when you do, look out for him. Yeah. Tell me, Jake, does anybody know I've come here to look into this? Oh, the whole town, I'm afraid. Uh, maybe I should have kept it quiet. Well, huh? sometimes it is better if... Uh... Where are the policies? Oh, uh... Oh, here, I'll, I'll get them for you. They're right in this little side office. Who are the beneficiaries? There's only one. The girl that is, or that was, married to Kevin Haskell. The other two are bachelors. She lives at the ranch. She filed a claim yet? No. Has, uh... Well, can you make the coroner's reports available to me? Anytime you want. I'll take it for you. Johnny Dollar. I mean, this is the office Dollar. of... Huh? I want to talk to you. I want you to meet me alone. Oh, who are you? Tell you where and when in a second. And don't come carrying a gun. Because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hardlock Dennis. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, I find that one of the fishermen who hangs around Lake Mojave is a character called Death. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>